Hi, my loves. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really hope that you are having a beautiful and an amazing day. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your love and support. I really appreciate it. This is a timeless collective reading for the sign of Sagittarius. High Priestess, Queen of Cups. Okay, so we have a water, a lot of water out here. Um, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, very heavy Pisces energy. The Hermit card is here, Virgo. There, this is a um, a collective message here about nurturing. Um, this is nurturing even your your own. I don't know why you're just starting to ring so loud. <laughs> this is nurturing, I would say, yourself, but in a very spiritual way. I feel like a lot of people are going within right now and honestly trying to figure out the best way to um, move forward with this higher level of consciousness. I think that what I, I feel is that a lot of people are sort of unaware <laughs> of even what to do with this energy. I, I just feel right now, look at the, the Hermit, the King of Cups, and the Justice card. It feels that something that you've been waiting for is about to happen and truly is going to blow you away, especially for some of you. Like if there's a situation here of you being like in a spiritual union, I feel like you're about to get evidence. Many of you, whatever has been happening with you spiritually, you're about to get evidence. Look at it. See, two of swords, the temperance, and the ten of pentacles. Yeah. Some of you have been building a very solid foundation for quite some time now spiritually. What you've been manifesting in the spirit, you're about to see it show up here in your physical reality. And I feel like it's something that's going to really, really just blow you away. There's absolutely a spiritual contract here. Um, Queen of Cups, King of Cups, man, that's... That's powerful with the Empress and the Justice being here. And I feel the way that I'm saying this for, oh my gosh, this is like, I don't know, lately the, the energy to me, it feels so like almost overwhelming. It's a very strong energy. The Tempers and the Ten of Pentacles here, it's like for some of you, and I don't mean to bring up like, partnership but that's what's coming up because with this new light consciousness that a lot of people are awakening to partnership relationships building unity community all of those things are important but you see here you have this queen of cups that's like the high priestess you have this king of cups here who is in this justice energy the two of these people together the temperance here, this is the divine feminine and masculine possibly. The two of these people blending together brings about the ten of pentacles. And again, it's something that the two of you are doing. Whether you know this person now or you're about to meet someone in spirit, somebody here is like a spiritual judge. And another person is, is like a, an alchemist, um, a there's a, a, a strong bond here. Cups is emotions. It's like you and someone, you have a connection. It's very, very deep. When you think about water, water is so deep. It's so mysterious. It can be calm. It can be peaceful. It can be a whole tsunami. It, something here, the way that you're able to honestly shapeshift energetically, If this is just your own feminine and masculine energy or you working with someone else, this temperance card has been coming out a lot lately. And again, for some of you, yes, you're blending, you're blending, you know, feminine and masculine energy. But the high priestess and the justice with the queen and king of cups, I mean, this is just the reading. I mean, what else is there to say? And then the hermit card here and the two of swords. I feel that um, there's possibly been two people here. Or just you yourself, taking how it resonates, to a source where it's like you've been stumped, like in this stalemate energy at a crossroads. However, with the hermit card here, you decided to go within. It's like you went through the, the valley of the shadow of death and you found your light. And you're coming back out now as this high priestess or this judge, somebody here who brings about justice. You have the power to bring about justice and spiritual matters and it's showing up here in the physical earthly realm 
whatever you're doing, yeah, <laughs> the world card, something is over. There's a cycle that's over here. This four of cups, this is this two of swords energy being blocked, being delayed, being stuck, being stagnant. It's over. Look at the three of cups, ten of cups, nine of cups. I knew, I, I said that the star, the death card, this is life changing. I knew it. Death card, magician, seven of swords here. Some people have possibly worked very, very hard to bring about endings, but nobody was working harder than you to bring about your new beginning. That's the thing. The power that the enemy or people or whomever have put into sabotaging things for you, whether it was death magic, schemes, scams, or whatever, they were never working harder than you or God for your particular case. You get the final say here. And I literally just did a message and I said this. Those people who have gone against the divine chosen beings, especially the feminine who holds all creative power, the people who have used anything like the abuse of power, the anything at all to stop, block, or delay the collective divine feminine energy, which is the energy of nurturing, obviously, cr creativity, fertility, and abundance. Anything that was done in the dark, people, they're going to suffer and be judged in public. And the judgments will be harsh. Because what people don't realize is without the feminine energy, without this divine channel and connection that many people have that has been blocked, how exactly do we continue to heal, to grow and evolve? This is the spiritual warfare that where so many people, they were hell bent on ensuring that light workers, healers, the divine feminine, the divine masculine were not able to rise to this occasion. And, you know, honestly, only the strongest will survive. Everyone did not make it. Everyone will not make it. But I feel that now you're going to really start seeing the people who are in their rightful place and position because the energy is so strong. The people who have done the work, there's, there, there will be no way to deny what side of the fence a person is on. This is literally the collapse of the matrix here. I don't think that a lot of things went the way certain people assumed it would go. Those people who are not operating in love and light. Because a lot of people have been harvesting and siphoning the energy of divine beings who have been called and chosen for a certain purpose. And what is... I feel is happening based on the energetic shift is it's like all cords that have been attached to people who have been stealing from you for their own protective shield or to gain power or prosperity, abundance, wealth, whatever, that energy is being returned to you because again, it's, and I said this in another reading, it's literally like the moon is passing by the sun. Everything that was being done in the dark in that moment is being revealed meaning that it has to face judgment. Anything put in the light, that's exposure, it's illumination. And if it's not fair, if it's not just, then of course, karma is being served, both good karma and bad karma. But this is simply, this is beautiful. The full card here, it's like a brand new beginning. The four of swords. And, you know, for some of you who have been waiting on a union, it's coming. The full card, if you or your person have been trapped in any way in the matrix here, some of you could be experiencing a separation. The union is coming in because here I feel, look, five of pentacles and the moon card, whatever illusions have been created or whatever has been done in the background to keep you and someone from coming together or to keep you from going into union, even with yourself, the illusion is being shattered, allowing you now to have a, a brand new passionate beginning. All right. Now, I want to make this clear because I see a lot of people get in the comments. I'll never go back to this person. I'm on my channel. Please understand. I'm not talking about any person that is hurting you, harming you or being karmic. I'm talking about true divine beings. Those people who are 100 percent in a divine connection, either with themselves or someone else. And a situation that is brought to you by God has its challenges. It doesn't mean that you have to be tormented and tortured. There are a lot of people who are destined to be together. Their purpose is what separates them, not drama. Understand that. Two purpose-driven people, they will possibly have periods of separation. 
And oftentimes, it's, they're really never separated. I don't, people who are truly in like these divine counterpart connections that have a purpose right now, they don't have time to separate. There may be moments of, of you experiencing a disconnect, but there is no true separation. So those of you who are dealing with someone and, and, and they're with another person and lying, cheating, scheming, scamming, doing spell work on you, that's not your divine partner. So no need to tell me, oh, I will never go back. So I'm not talking about that person. Maybe some of you have not even met your person yet, and that's fine. You need to continue working on yourself to manifest that person. But I just want to make that clear. People need to learn to be more discerning. Things that are sent to you by God come with tests as well. Your strength will be tested. It's not the same as you being bullied and tormented by something that was sent to you from the pits of hell. There's a difference. So every time you go through a situation with someone, you don't have to assume that, oh, it's not good for me. Especially when you're going through periods of separation or healing and a person, you see them actually growing, you see them evolving. People who are in purpose-driven relationships where both people have a purpose separately and they come together for a purpose where their connection, their relationship, their marriage or whatever is literally their ministry to the world. Both people will always have things to do separately. These are not codependent situations. The relationship the, the even like the marriage, it's it's because of a covenant. I'm talking to the people who want to be married and in covenant, not people who just want to have a wedding. It's a difference. Because it's a lot of people, they just want to have a wedding and say that they're with a particular person or they finally got their person from somebody else. That's not a divine contract or or situation in in, in my opinion. This is an extremely positive energy. There's too many cards. <laughs> I did just see the hierarchy though. So here you have the justice, the temperance, and the fool card. This is that alchemical power, that ability to transmute, but it comes with you making the decision also to take risk. King of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, Four of Swords. Again, someone could, somebody here, um, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius. And I was going to say this before, like in the next like four months, something of great significance could be happening. What is this? In four months, that'll be closer to like Leo Virgo season. I feel right now that a lot of people are, you're, you're building a lot. For some of you, even if you are with someone or not, you could still experience some a, a deeper healing. Um, some people need a, a period of rest right now from what you've been fighting through. You need a period of rest, a period of, of recovery. In a way, this four of swords to me, some of y'all have no idea. I'm telling you, like, there's going to be a situation to come in where you will really be able to rest and heal, travel, relax. The Queen of Cups, the world, and the lovers. I mean, the Queen of Cups is wrapping up a cycle and going into success, going into union with self, and also a divine contract, the King of Cups, it looks to be very focused on healing and, and building wealth and abundance. The two of these people come together and everything balances for union. They run off in the sunset together. That's what they want to do. You see it aligning perfectly. And then with the High Priestess and the Star, Nine of Cups. It's someone's purpose to heal, to heal others. It's just like you're being called into your purpose. And for some people, to be honest, <laughs> you don't have a choice. It's been written already. You don't really have a choice. You, you can't run from this. 
the hermit card, the ten of cups, and the three of cups. Yeah, it's it's finding light. Understanding light is consciousness. You're walking through this dark world like a a a, a, a spirit guide, an earth angel. You you carry the light. Everything that you do carries light. That's why you have to be mindful of what you do and what you say and who you attach yourself to. And I've been talking about this a lot. Being mindful of who you yoke yourself with. Friends, family, and lovers. Birds of a feather flock together. You hang out around all karmic people. A lot of karmic situations are going to show up in your life. You go into situations or communities where it's full of chaos, conflict, confusion. That's what's going to show up in your life. If, there, if those lower energies are, are even within yourself, it's going to show up in your environment. This reading is showing me that a lot of people are going within and they're ridding themselves of anything dark. But facing the darkness. Facing it head on, getting to the root of it, finding the, the true origin of it. Where did it come from? Once you face the demon within yourself, there is no demon walking that can scare you. Two of swords. All of this greatness has been blocked. Seven of Swords here because of possibly death. Like, it's the energy of death. Everything you, like, someone worked very hard to do this. The Moon and the Five of Pentacles. It's like somebody wanted you on, down on your knees begging and pleading. It's just understanding polarity. Where there is light, there's going to be darkness. There's always going to be people around who want to see you suffer because you're doing the things that either they can't do, that they want to do, that they should have done, or whatever the case may be. When you are exalted into higher levels of commitment and purpose in your life, naysayers, jealousy, envy, evil, all of that is a part of it. And once you learn... That and you truly accept it and learn how to cancel it out, it becomes a lot easier for you to stay in alignment and on your actual assignment. A lot of people are very distracted because of, you know, this person said that they don't like me. This happened, that happened. What is my family going to say? This isn't the season for that. That's over. That's the reason why, you know, on the channel, I see even in the YouTube community, there's so much stuff. I'm just like, you know, no friends, no new friends. <laughs> with people who, you know, I just, I don't um, mesh well with a lot of people. I don't. You should focus on attracting your tribe. Knight of Cups and the Emperor. Ooh, and the Two of Cups, see? There's love coming in. And somebody fought very hard and remained very persistent. This is every season, the divine masculine energy here with the emperor. You have a masculine that has been fighting very, very hard to have victory and success. You may know this person or you may not, but there's a lot of competition, a lot of conflict and chaos. However, this person is going to make their way to you. And you will be able to move forward. Wow, look. Six of Swords, Will of Fortune, the Sun, and the Chariot. You will move forward, and it's going to be beautiful. Some of you, you may meet this person traveling. They could live at a distance. You and this person could come together and eventually relocate. But some of you are definitely, you're meeting your match. If you haven't met them already. If you've already met your person, whatever roadblock or situation has been here, that's coming to an end. There is an energy, though, of someone for sure who has been on the outside looking in, doing everything to try and sabotage your life and your connections. Yeah, that's the truth. The four wands. This is a new beginning. 
and you have all mental clarity. All of this confusion is what's being eclipsed out. This reading is so straightforward. I mean, like, it's, it's so clear. Crystal clear. I feel like that's the energy that we're in right now. A lot of things are crystal clear. You know, there's the, the outside external forces, of course. They're always going to be there. But even if you look at how the cards are, all this negative energy is right here. All of this beautiful energy is here. This could signify that you still need to be aware because as you are moving into this energy, you will always face new levels, new devils. You will face these, you know, situations and people who will try to block you. But if you hold closely onto like your, what you know your purpose and your assignment is, holding on to that light, that higher level of consciousness and awareness, this type of stuff shouldn't really stop you or slow you down because for many of you, your entire life has been blocked by this type of negative energy because you didn't have the, the consciousness and the awareness to shift your mindset to have more self-control to get around this. Oftentimes when people run into this type of negative energy, they feed into it. And sometimes that unconsciously, they're, you're feeding into it. Let's think even about the eclipse. Everybody, they created so much fear. That's why I always say, like, stop buying into this fear. It's it's programming. Whenever there's things happening, I just stop. I just stop watching TV. I'll stop watching TV for months at a time. I don't want to hear anything that anybody is talking because I, it's a program. Every person watches TV, listens to music, or whatever. Whatever they're saying, whatever you're feeding your mind. Is going to shape your your reality in a way. Technology and everything else is literally grooming us. If they make you afraid of everything, you won't go out and meet people. You won't go out and start a business. You won't go out and do anything. You have to be willing to take the leap of faith. Look at that. I love you in marriage. This reading is a prediction for somebody. Either you're with the person that you're going to marry or you will meet that person very soon. Four to ten weeks. Something significant is happening between now and leap, uh, October. There's a foundational framework that someone is working on right now. Later this year in the fall, it'll be smooth sailing. If you keep the distractions out. Love is here. I love you. Somebody loves you. And you love somebody. Nostalgia, past love, past memories, thinking about old times. Communication, expect a call. Look at this, expect a call. You have two options and rejection. Your past is calling out to you. You need to reject it because this person, look at that. Expect the call here is telepathy. Either you have someone from your past that rejected you, you need to reject them, or you're dealing with someone. They have someone from their past that they rejected or that they need to reject. Telepathy is here. Bad influences. When somebody is under the influence, they are trying to telepathically communicate with you. You need to be mindful of that. A lot of you need to know that your your the thing that is for you is not in your past pain. You get tripped up on this situation, a lot of you from the past, because <clears throat> replaying these events and re-traumatizing yourself and uh, it, it's what allows these negative energies to, to still come in and, and further try to dictate and control 
how you think about certain situations or a particular person. I said this not long ago, like you, you don't need to allow empathy to allow these very narcissistic people into your life. This could be friends, family, or whomever. Somebody is sitting around though thinking about the past. This is a karmic partner that you have a past life connection with. So it's a very intense connection because you have absolutely known them or been with them in a previous lifetime. However, this person, this lifetime, they most likely rejected you. You need to be mindful also of any type of bad influences. Unsupportive friends and family, drugs, alcohol, bad habits, all of that. Because your divine channel just needs to be very clear because you do not need to allow your channel to be open for anyone to communicate with you their pain. Most of you are empaths. A person that is communicating with you telepathically, sending you their pain, their regret, their shame, their sorrow. It's to get you to cave in so that they can come in and sabotage your new connections. Yeah, competition. Somebody knows that you have someone new in your life or coming into your life that's going to bring you an offer of commitment. A very loyal, committed person is coming in because someone knows King and Queen of Cups, Justice Temperance, that you and someone, you have, um, you have a contract together. A soul contract. It's 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 someone out here you're so really so you're completely meant to be with. Happiness. <laughs> awakening. So there's a, a spiritual awakening taking place. You have your meditation, affection. You and someone else are both going through um, a spiritual awakening. They want to spend quality time with you, but you have somebody out here. <laughs> Who is very obsessed. So someone is definitely stalking your new um, connections here. They're stalking you. There's a third party out here. We have Mercury Retrograde, a soul contract. Again, this is that um, third party energy. They're stalking, but they're being confused by what information they're receiving. Spirit is doing that on purpose. If this person is getting readings or... Looking into your life, hacking, stalking, spying, I can guarantee you whatever information that they are receiving, it's, it's, it's not accurate. I told you manifest. Oh, my goodness. I'm leaving it here once I say this. Manifesting within a few months, twin flame. What did I say? Many of you are about to meet this person. And you have a karmic that is trying very hard to get themselves here. This looks to be a karmic feminine here. But someone is making plans to be with you. And now, of course, for some of you, it could, for some of you, your person is someone of the past. Okay. And that's fine for those of you who are reconciling or there's a reunion. Um, but a reconciliation or reunion can also be with someone that is brand new in your life. And there, um, there's just a past life energy that the two of you share. Some of you, you've been friends with someone um, or maybe you dated them and it just was, you know, right person, wrong time. But these connections that are coming in, you guys, they're, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of, of, of tragedy and, and trauma. It could be somebody that you know, yes, but I don't feel like you have a lot of history with them, especially not, Anything romantic, really. So I, I definitely don't want you to think that I'm saying, oh, you, there's no way you could reconnect with someone from the past because some people, that is your story. But you have a lot of people from your past. The person that you're meant to be with, I don't think is the person that has hurt you the most. A lot of people push this narrative that the twin flame, oh, they're so difficult, they're so difficult. It's the person that ran off, left you, rejected you, hurt you, mentally abused you, used you up, and went to start a life with somebody else, and then they come back once they've healed, and oh, you run off in the sunset. No. A person sent to you by God, they're, they're never going to actually hurt you in that way. 
separating from you to focus on their purpose. Yeah, but separating from you because they rejected you and they thought the grass was green on the other side and they, they played you for a fool. No, <laughs> stop listening to that. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a lot of really amazing people out here who, you know, have morals, values, <clears throat> real standards. They don't have to leave you. If God himself won't leave or forsake you, why do you think he will bring you a person that will leave and forsake you? Think about it. A person that can leave you at any point simply because they want to go out and frolic with other people. It's not you that they wanted. Someone leaving you to go and make themselves a better person for themselves so that it also benefits you. I feel like there's something that's worthy of looking at. Security soulmate, hide yourself and watch out. <laughs> this is a warning message. Beware of gossip, envy, and jealousy. Someone or something is trying to stand in the way of this connection. You have a connection that's coming that brings security. It could be a higher level soulmate or twin flame for some of you, but you and this person, you're magnetic souls. Security, this connection is secured by the divine, which makes sense too, because you have the king and queen of cups here, and then you have this huge angel bringing you and someone together, and this is justice. It's fair. This is how it's supposed to be. You'll have a sense of comfort with this person. No matter how dark or muddy your path may be, trust the guidance of your higher self. You have magnetic souls. Both of you are freeing yourselves. Whoever this is, you and someone else, you are confronting your inner fears. You're freeing yourselves from a lot of karmic friends, family, past lovers. It doesn't mean that those people won't still try to you know, connect with you. But the two of you, you're, you're magnetic souls. You, you've already connected. Peace of mind. See, yin and yang. This is your other half. They give you a sense of peace. And I always feel that, like, to me, that's how I, I see everything now. If it's chaotic, <laughs> it's just not for you. That's how I feel. Because there's a lot of things that people don't realize can bring you so much peace. Things don't have to be hard. For people who have gotten to this point, you've gone through so much already. I just don't feel like God will get you to a place and say, okay, now I want you to suffer more. <laughs> Your life is not meant to be lived just, just to suuffer. Past life love, your, your soul remembers this intense connection. Awakening. Both people in this connection are undergoing spiritual transformations. You can be completely open with this person. Somebody wants a second chance, though. This relationship deserves a second chance. So for some of you, you there is a person, either you and this person are separated because you both needed to focus on yourself. You both need to go to really um, work on your own unhealed wounds and clear your energy field. So for sure, get like these past life karmic lovers out of your energy. For a lot of you, that's what's been blocking your connection, to be honest. The fact that you still have these karmic energies that are watching you, gossiping, sending you the evil eye, and you have not fully healed. But now that a lot of the negative energy is being eclipsed out, it's going to make it much easier for the soul connection to become more secure and stable with your actual counterpart. Yeah, this is someone you can be completely vulnerable with. I feel like the situation that's not for you, though, was something that was very passionate, but it's not enduring. But you have someone from the past, most likely, that doesn't have good intentions. They want a second chance. They'll come in, and it's Mercury retrograde. Of course, they'll come in, love on you, and then they're going to be right back out the door. But then you also have a second chance with someone from a past life that is your actual better half. 
or just I'm gonna say but other half. <laughs> and you can be completely vulnerable with this person. But the two of you still have, you know, work to do. Look, here and now. See, there's someone that's a part of your life. You're, you're a true love. And it's safe for you to trust this situation. But you need to make sure that you have very firm boundaries with friends, family, and past lovers who are just not aligned with your with your higher self at this point. There's people around you have, who have very toxic behaviors you cannot allow them. So for, for many of you, I guess what I'm going to say too is many of you are in a, a spiritual marriage that's about to show up in the physical. You need to start actually operating as if you know you're married. You need to start protecting yourself, your energy, your environment, as well as your person. Cover yourself and your person. Even if you don't know who they are, sending out a, a prayer for that person with the right intentions, it'll 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 make it there. But you need to start covering anything that, you know, you're going into that because it's like, oh, who was it? I'm trying to think. Things, some of these different dark energies or, or entities, they're, they're here to destroy covenants, you know? You need to start protecting whoever or whatever you're going into a covenant with. Because the enemy is lurking. But overall, this is beautiful. I'm going to say I'm, I'm absolutely seeing two people going through like major spiritual transformations coming together. Some people can heal together. But like I said, you know, when there's a separation... And the only reason why you and someone are separating is to heal. That's beautiful. This this is, is very peaceful. I feel like a lot of you, that's how you will know your person. It's, it's just peaceful. And let me say this. I think I said this yesterday. <laughs> Sometimes you have to realize that you were someone's true love, but they weren't your true love. You can love somebody unconditionally and they not love you. They will eventually realize that you were their true love. And it may be hurtful, but the sooner that you realize that the person you love the most was not your true love, that that person hasn't actually come into your life yet, It'll be easier for you to start moving forward and actually allowing yourself to embrace and accept the love that is truly a vibrational match for you. A lot of people now are going to realize that, wow, you were the truth. But there's a truth and there's a lie. They were your lie. You were their truth. Accept it. And it's funny because I'm, I'm hearing, you know, people play the game, two truths and a lie. Your true person is here and there's somebody here, they're, they're a liar. The connection is an illusion. It's a lie. You're going to have to discern and see which one. And a, a lot of people tend to mistake peace for being bored. Being able to be completely yourself in a relationship with someone where you can be totally vulnerable. Those are the connections that actually last Many of you, you hear a twin flame, this, that, and you think, oh, something that is so, so, so passionate and all that. Those are the situations that a lot of you, you're being love bombed in and taken advantage of. These people who have a double, triple life, they're not disciplined. They're not consistent. They come in and, and they make your heart beat out your chest and you think that means that they're the person for you. No. So you have to discern, but if you want to balance yourself out and be guided by, you know, God, Holy Spirit, angels, your ancestors, ascended masters to your person and the two of you can walk hand in hand together. All you have to do is say yes. 
to continuing to move forward and heal your wounds. But you cannot allow these lower vibrational people or, or energies with these toxic behaviors to attach themselves to you. So, this is beautiful though. Clarity. It's like you're beginning to recognize even if you don't know who's for you, you certainly should know now who was not for you. <laughs> but the Ace of Wands, the Four of Wands, and the Ace of Swords, this is truth, it's clarity, it's it's real, it's passionate. It's enduring as well. Some of you, like I said, look, riding off into the sunset, literally the chariot and the sun. It's happening. And you have a person here who is very steadfast. There's a masculine out here. They've been very wounded. They've been wounded on their own personal journey, but this person is still determined to go to battle for this feminine. And as they continue to have victory, success, and receive rewards and recognition in their life, they want to share that with you. They want to share their will of fortune with you. It's so beautiful.